Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we are going to be upgrading a server. I have an awesome Lenovo X3650 Model 5 out in the data center. We will be going out there shortly but that server has one CPU. Uh, it's a very good CPU. It's an E5-2687 version 4 which is a 12 core 3 gigahertz I have it right over here. It's an awesome CPU, but with just one CPU in the server, I am only able to use riser card number one. And I really want to use riser card number two as well. So today I'm going to take this awesome CPU out of there, uh, which is also very expensive, which is why I'm not just buying one more. It is easily a thousand dollar CPU if you get the good price and you're not always that lucky. So today we're going to be putting in two other CPUs. It will give about the same when we're done. But um, the server out there is running Proxmox and it's running a virtual machine on Proxmox. That virtual machine is doing folding at home. So if you're still doing folding at home at my Playhouse team, earlier this morning there was 128 of us left and we just made it to spot number 170 on the, on the charge. Awesome! It is going very slow now. We are in top 200 and the teams that are there, well, they didn't get there by coincident. So, but never mind. I want to run a slight little benchmark before we exchange the CPUs so that I can see what impact this had. Okay, so this virtual machine has all the cores passed through and it does 1945 in uh, Cinebench R15. Oh, can we remember that? Uh, I better make a note of it. And do you want to save this core? Cool. Yeah, let's. Oh, yeah, if we save it, I can remember it. Save it, then we can see it next time. And I also ran performance mark or performance tests 9 point, and that scores 20,020. So we have those two tests. I'll now shut this machine down and we'll replace the CPUs and we'll start it up again and see if there's any improvement or downgrade or whatever. So out here in the data center the server is now blinking and showing that it's using 14 watts which is quite an improvement. It was almost using 300 watts before doing the folding at home so that was quite a bit. Yeah so I'll go around the back and remove the, the cable but we could just see what we're going to be putting in. We have a couple of CPUs here. Let's just have that one out of the back. See if we can see what we have here. So these are two E5-2637 version 4. They are 3.5 gigahertz and they are 6 cores, I believe. Okay, so here we have the server. It is a bit dusty because I did my server video where I was upgrading and painting and yeah doing stuff and this server was running full paste in here so um, yeah we're gonna take some stuff out this graphics card I'm gonna take that out it hasn't been doing anything it's apparently not very good at uh, folding at home so um, yeah this one isn't isn't doing much so we're taking that out there. Oh, but that uh, 10 gigabit Ethernet card, that is definitely going back in. Then we need to remove this plastic thing so that we can get to the good stuff, which is down here. Here is the CPU, and over here is the second CPU. And I see that we only have four blocks of memory in here. You wonder what that's, what this is. Okay, these are 64 gigabyte blocks, so we'll have to move two of the blocks over to the second CPU and see if it will um, be okay with that. But we need to take this one out of here, so we're gonna be releasing that. And we can see that the thermal cooling compound has done great, it has been covering the whole thing. Awesome! And we'll take release this CPU there and 
I do not want the socket to uh, to be here exposed and stuff so I'm gonna ready the next CPU and I'm just gonna drop that in very quickly after taking this one out so taking that one out putting this one in making sure to put it in in the right order awesome just gonna use a bit of toilet paper to make sure to get any dirty stuff off of there that looks pretty good yeah no problem there we need this one down and then we need to to put these down in the right order this one over here needs to go down first in there and then this other one can go down so awesome that one is in we might as well put the next one in right away so let's release this one first get that out of the way release that one release that one move this out of the way I need to remove this plastic thing but let's just pop the CPU in first that goes in in the same orientation as the other one there so now that is in take this off and keep it put this down to put the next CPU in we need some stuff and that just came in uh, through the mail today um, we need to pop in another couple of fans so they came in Another one here, also a fan, yes, both of them are for the awesome Lenovo X3650 Model 5 and then we have a heatsink, very nicely wrapped in paper, so let's check that one out as well, there, oh it comes brand new and stuff, with the heating compound still on it that's a plus so that's the one we got a couple of heat pipes going up and yeah we can kind of see those in there dissipating the heat I'll clean this one up I do believe they're exactly the same isn't they? they look very similar they are actually a little bit different if we look at it no yeah the heat pipes are rounded here they're more square on this one probably about the same the model numbers are the same uh, the manufacturing date is not the same but well i guess it's the same enough okay so before we uh, put the heat sinks on i think it's beneficial to mess around with the ram two cpus is different from one cpu uh, so with one CPU you, you of course only put RAM in one CPU but with two CPUs you, uh, you put RAM in the second CPU as well. The order of the RAM is on the left of the server, let's check that. Right here and it's very simple to follow. If there's one CPU you go this way, if there are two CPUs you go this way and well if you have one block of RAM you put it in one, if you have two you put it in one and thirteen, if you have three, four, five and that on so we're going for that one so we're gonna be putting in number 1 13 14 and 16 so down here at number 1 and number 4 they're actually gonna stay here we have number well that's number 12 so that one must be number 9 and number 12 so number 9 and number 12 is gonna move up here so it's it's not that difficult because CPU number 2 it wants number 13 which is the first RAM block on that CPU and it chooses to uh, turn them around there and the next white slot up there is the one that is in number nine so we'll turn that around and put that up here now ram fixed i have already put on the thermal heating compound so uh, we're just gonna pop this in and this is the my playhouse approved way to do it And then the lever comes down and it 
this is way nicer than the Intel scalable CPUs uh, where you have to do a lot of screwing around. So the other CPU comes with the thermal heating compound uh, already on there. So let's hope that the factory has done a better job than I can do. Uh, which I'm uh, of course very doubtful about, but let's, let's hope so. And there we are. That's all in and good. Cool. We need the fans up here. There are a couple of fillers. When there is no CPUs here, all the fans aren't needed. So they put in them so that the air won't go, well actually go in and out this way. So instead it will, um, it will block it. And so we will put in the new awesome fans here. Oh. Okay, that, that went in way too easy. Uh, I like a little bit more resistant there. Okay. Good. So this GPU is going out. And I was planning to try and put that one in instead. So let's see if that is possible. Let's see if I can get this out without breaking everything. Ah. There we are. And then I wanted to try and put this one in. It's a P106. Dash 90. It's a render card. It's not good for anything else but to crunch numbers. So that could be good to have in there. This card has been absolutely dismo at, uh, at doing folding at home. It has been doing next to nothing. So it hasn't been any good for that. Uh, probably a software issue because it's the card should be a lot faster than what I've seen out of it. There. And we can connect some power to it and it's gonna be cool, I'm sure. Okay, we're good to put this back on. And we can put the riser card back here. That's gonna be lots of space for that now. Let's see, and lots of space to put in the power cable. Cool, lots of space. We're just gonna be reusing the same cable again. Um, if you're in need of a cable like this, please check out my Playhouse store. I, uh, I have some of these. Um, not exactly like this one, but all black. Uh, but it does about the same thing. From 8 pins to 8 pins and 6 pins. So we're just gonna pop the 8 pins down on the system board. And there, can we get to it? There. And then the 8 pin connection, we're not gonna be using that. It's only a 6 pin connection. It goes into this tiny little GPU there for some additional power. Mm, why can't we hide this one? Out of the way. Uh, let's see. Get it out of the airflow. Something like that. We need a riser card over here, don't we? Oh, this is stuff for the M4. Oops. This is stuff for the M5. Oh dear, we don't have a riser card. How could I not have thought about that? Oh dear. Okay, so I guess that's not gonna be today. We are ready for it though. Okay, so I have reattached all the cables, so let's power this on. See if it will boot. It shows something on the screen. That is a good thing. Uh, okay, let's um, let's give it a little bit. This looks okay right now. Okay, this still looks good. Um, I was wrong. The E5 2637V4 is only a quad-core CPU with hyper threading, so eight threads. So we are going from um, 12 cores down to 8 cores but we are gaining half a gigahertz in frequency. So let's see where that brings us. Awesome! Proxmox has loaded so now we can go to the computer and, um, and check how everything is and run our benchmark again. We are up and running again. We now have 16 CPUs which is 16 threads. There are really only 8 cores and 8 threads. Uh, these two CPUs that I put in there, they are meant for databases. Uh, they have a really high clock frequency. Uh, 
they are a few years old when Intel was the dominant on the market and had no competitors 3.5 gigahertz uh, these CPUs are meant uh, to run as fast as possible with as few cores as possible to get the most out of your licensing on Oracle databases or like SQL databases. Uh, whenever there is a per core license, well, you want as few cores as possible and you want them to run as fast as possible. So that's really what this CPU is meant for. It's not really meant for what we're doing here. But we did run a test and it's, um, it, it, it's a bit disappointing. We scored 1415, where on the other CPU we scored 1945. So we lost 520 points here. Yikes. Also over here around this past mark. And on that one it scored 16,679. On the other one, um, the other CPU, we ran 20,020. So a decrease in performance here. Not extremely happy about that. Something called a 3D video controller did show up here. I could have put that in with the other CPU as well, but I actually have plans for that CPU now that I am. Um, well, we're not gonna ruin that for you, but that CPU is gonna go into my uh, workstation it is actually also a workstation CPU I don't have a workstation I have a regular PC but it's going in there but I want to try and see if we can get this up and running so I'll be right back okay I did get the driver installed for the Nvidia P106-90 but I ran into the issue with that Nvidia don't want us to use their uh, graphics card that are not meant for virtualization on virtualized environment so and I haven't done all the cheating stuff to to get it through here anyway um folding at home does see it and it's ready to use it but well I'm not expecting anything to go through to it because the driver isn't working so eh. so yeah that was a bit of a doubtful upgrade slash downgrade uh, we got two CPUs in there, which means that I can now use the riser card number two uh, Which it turned out that I haven't bought yet. So I, I really I really thought that I had one of those Apparently I have a I have enough for the M4, but none for the M5 eh. Even bought a new one for the SR650 But apparently I forgot to buy one for the M5 I still need to upgrade this Proxmox, it's still running a really old version from two years ago. I will have to do that at some point, but right now I'm just gonna let it crunch on. Yeah, that was a doubtful downgrade. So uh, what should I ask you to do today? Well, please like this video. We downgraded, it worked perfectly. Nice downgrade. And I would also like to thank my patrons. Those two fans and the CPU cooler was bought from Patreon money. And I, I did a bit of whining at the start of the month about losing patrons at the start of the month and gaining them throughout the month. And now we are getting into a new month. And I was actually happy to see that I gained seven Patreon subscribers last month July. I did not expect that. So uh, thank you very much. Do check me out over on Patreon. Every week I post a separate Patreon only video. I call it a WhatsApp video where I go around uh, with my mobile phone and I, I do a quick video, five to seven minutes ish, about what I've been doing this weekend. And it's just one cut. It's like a live stream, but it's not live. I have a chance to cut out stuff if I mess up. Last uh, this Sunday, my good buddy called me in the middle of it and I had to start over. Eh. But, well, we did that. So yeah, join me over at Patreon where people are just gathering up ish. And uh, thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye bye.